Bulaginaka, my name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tauvenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in in the news tonight, closing submissions in BG Times trial on Tuesday. Ethel K affairs fear culture is evolving rapidly. And Ra residents raise concerns during Talanor session. From the studios of FBC Subar, Jackie Smith. The first defense witness in the Fiji Times sedition trial, Paul Garrity, while giving evidence in the Suva High Court this afternoon, said that he doesn't feel that the article in question created any ill feeling or hostility among the population of Fiji. Garrity is a linguistic professor at the University of the South Pacific and is considered to be an expert on the Ethel K language. Pranita Prakash reports. During examination by Defense Counsel Wiley Clark, Garrity said that he doesn't believe that the article in question would have encouraged feelings of ill will among the ethnic groups in the country. He also said that he doesn't believe that the article could have created insecurity among the ethnic groups, adding the Muslims and other denominations get along well in the country. Garrity also said that there is small readership of the Nailalakai newspaper and doesn't believe these readers read Nailalakai for political news. There was no cross-examination by the prosecution. Defense counsel Wiley Clark referred to the court translation and the translation done by Garrity. Garrity did not agree with court translation in relation to certain words in the article. Meanwhile, second defense witness for the Fiji Times, lawyer Richard Naidu, told the court today that the law firm Monroe Lees he works for provides free publication work for the newspaper, meaning that either him, John Efford or Nick Barnes view the content of the Fiji Times newspaper to see if it's not defaming anyone, breaching any laws before it is published. Naidu said that he only receives email from senior reporters and editors when they have queries on stories. He adds that he does not receive any emails from publisher Hankarts and usually receives emails from editor-in-chief Fred Wesley once a week. However, he said that Arts does have the liberty to contact him. Naidu adds that he sometimes provides training to editorial staff in the Fiji Times group. He mentioned that he doesn't do much in the Nailalakai newspaper as it is a weekly newspaper. Writer Chasaya Wangambada, Nailalakai editor Andre Rabula, editor-in-chief Fred Wesley and publisher Hank Arts on trial, charged with sedition and aiding and abating. Fiji Times Limited publisher Hank Arts and writer Chasaya Wangambada have pleaded not guilty to sedition, while Fred Wesley and Andre Rabula have pleaded not guilty to aiding and abating sedition. It is alleged that the Fiji Times printed the Nailalakai newspaper which contained an article which had content with seditious intention to promote feelings of ill will and hostility amongst the population of Fiji, particularly the Muslims and the non-Muslims. The closing submission will be heard on Tuesday. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. There is fear that the Ithaukei culture and tradition might evolve rapidly with the fast growth of modernization and technology. This has prompted the Department of Ithaukei Affairs to embark on a cultural enhancement program to maintain the Ithaukei identity. Ali Kimbia with the story. In an effort to save our culture and tradition, the Institute of Language and Culture has engaged youths in a program to better understand what we are known for. The generation of Itaukei today are not the generation two, three years ago, two, three generations ago, who were raised in the village, where they were in the environment which was conducive for all this cultural transmission. With this detachment from the traditional environment came also disconnection with these heritage and values. The cultural enhancement program will enable participants to have that level of maturity to maintain our traditions. Participants of the first ever cultural exchange program got a chance to know more of where they come from and how to go about traditional protocol. Uh, the study has empowered us individually uh, in terms of knowing who we are, um, what is our status in our clan or our individual abusa, and uh, how to conduct this episode.
The Department of Itokei Affairs is calling on youths from all over the country to engage in this program and at the same time make an effort to save our culture. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Issues ranging from rural electrification, land and support following T.C. Winston were raised by residents of Ra during a Talanor session with Acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayyum. The Talanor was part of the handover ceremony of 10 primary schools that were severely damaged by the Category 5 cyclone. Felipe Naikaso has more. Residents living in and around Ra took the opportunity to ask questions or clarify certain issues with Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Ayaz Said Kayyum. The electricity pole has been uh, fitted, however, uh, the wiring hasn't been done for the past two years. When the lease expired in, 19, uh, in 2014, and uh, just lately I received a letter from the land, land department stating that I have to pay $6,700 and then I can approve the lease. While some issues could not be fixed on the day, Sad Kayum has given his assurance to those present that relevant authorities will look into the matter. Another issue which was raised by these residents was the assistance provided to them following tropical cyclone Winston. <laughs> It's after two years since the uh, devastation caused by tropical cyclone Winston and uh, we still haven't received our items that were purchased through the cards. Uh, the question is being asked about uh, the cards that were given under the Health for Homes initiative for Winston and how some of them have not been able to get all the goods that they've, uh, they actually ordered. So what we're going to do is obviously get them to uh, give us all the details, like the card number, and then we can follow up with the hardware company. While some met personally with the acting Prime Minister to discuss their issues, those present were happy with the responses they received. Philip and I, Kasu, FBC News. Prime Minister and COP23 President Vorenge Mbaini Marama today wrapped up the Talanor Dialogue meeting in Bonn, Germany, calling on global leaders to act now in the fight against climate change. Mbaini Marama stressed there needs to be an effective global response with Fiji and other vulnerable states suffering from the brunt of climate change events. The PM relaying the story of Fiji's most recent cyclones and the death toll of eight Fijians in TC Josie, a Category 1 system. Maggie Boyle reports. The Prime Minister sounding alarm bells and the need for global climate action. We are all in the same canoe and time is running out. Please show the leadership that the world so desperately needs. The COP23 president has urged delegates about the practical necessities in the lead-up to COP24 in December, relaying the recent back-to-back -back cyclones in Fiji and the unfathomable death toll from a Category 1 cyclone. Baini Marama stressed time is running out. Now is the time to commit the decisions the world was, must make. We must complete the implementation guidelines of the Paris Agreement on time. We must ensure that the Talano dialogue, dialogue leads to more ambition in our NDCs. Meanwhile, the PM also commended delegates for actively embracing and participating in the Talano spirit. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. India's relations with Fiji in all spheres is excellent and continues to share a close bond with Fiji. High Commissioner of India to Fiji, Vishva Sapkal, says India is assisting many countries in the world to promote participatory democracy and ele election administration. Sapkal says India is committed in providing possible assistance to Fiji in the upcoming general elections. As part of the commitment, Commission handed over ink worth more than $200,000 packed in 60 boxes comprising of 6,000 bottles. And we are also happy that we have recently handed over a check uh, of Fijian $67,830 for procuring uh, Mahindra vehicles and, and those will be uh, soon procured and that, that will be also being used for uh, election commissions. Uh, we are sure that we, our cooperation in this field, in this sphere, will be further strengthened. Still to come, stigma is still a concern for cancer patients and caregiving skills critical with rise in NCDs. Stay with us. Uh, I'm going to show you what you call it, I'm going to show you what you call it, I'm going to show you what you call it, I'm going to show you what you call it.
Many Fijians diagnosed with cancer often fight a devastating battle of life and death while having to deal with social stigma. The Fiji Cancer Society says in some instances, people had to secretly make their way to hospital in a taxi rather than an ambulance, but this should not be the case. Kelly Vavala reports. The Fiji Cancer Society is encouraging people to talk about cancer openly as it's not a taboo issue and it just might lessen the stigma from the public. We've had a few patients where um, they pretty much um, worried about the concerns of the their neighbors um, where we know that they are unable to travel in the taxi so therefore we offer them the ambulance. FCS Chief Executive Belinda Chan says the stigma exists mostly against patients with breast cancer because of their physical and psychological stress. Cancer is something that we all need to talk about we all need to include it in it as part of our daily talk. CWM consultant surgeon Dr. Chosese Turangava says social stigma might be a factor in why patients seek traditional or herbal cures for cancer. I haven't seen anything that has worked over the last six years and the ladies have come back with really bad cancers that um, most times have come in late. Cancer changes a person's life. It can be physically and emotionally devastating, leaving one wounded in both body and spirit. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The health ministry is facing service delivery issues in urban and peri-urban areas due to the rapidly increasing population. The demands for primary health care services in these areas have rocketed, putting a strain on medical professionals. Rachel Nath reports this was highlighted when the ministry's 2016 annual report was scrutinized by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Social Affairs today. The health ministry has highlighted its challenge with several service delivery issues. Some of our service delivery issues or challenges, if we may put it, is the growing burden of non-communicable diseases, which we are now trying to re-strategize and find ways of addressing. The geographical location of some of the health service divisions. There is also delayed health seeking behavior, which is resulting in late detection and treatment. With these to be ironed out, the ministry says they have improved services in areas of providing assistance to a wide segment of the community. The ministry has reassured the committee all health facilities are of good standard and not depleted. She has a maintenance and upgrading uh, plan. So what the ministry does is that um, at the moment in terms of the status of the health facilities in general and the staff accommodation, they are all in a reasonable condition. The health ministry was allocated $214.4 million for the 2016 financial year, of which only $119.2 million was used. This was due to the alterations of the financial year. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The need for caregiving skills is crucial due to the increasing number of diabetes-induced amputations around the country. In dealing with the issue, the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation has organized training for those who need it. Sainani Boilo reports. The first two-day caregiving training was for the benefit of those already taking care of family members and also to prepare others who may need such skills in the future. This training recognizes the need to empower our communities to be able to look after their loved ones who are in need of special individual support. This training is an acknowledgement of the dem demographic, demographic makeup of Fiji. Australia Pacific Training Centre Chief Executive Dennis O'Brien says the APTC is closely collaborating with the Ministry due to the high demand from families who need support to care for the elderly and persons with disabilities. So we are here to try and empower them and uh, find out what their exact needs are so that we can hopefully in the future target some training and put some uh, things into place to assist them as much as what we can. Uniwanga says Fijians are not only living longer but an increasing number are suffering disabilities and families should know proper caregiving in case it is required in the future.
the two days training session ended today. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Two charity organisations in Christchurch, New Zealand are rallying around a Fijian baby with a rare eye disorder so she can get the hospital care she needs. The eight-month-old and her mother have returned to Christchurch for a second crucial operation that couldn't be offered here at home. This report from TVNZ. Hello, Princess. You want to have a snuggle? It's the warmest of welcomes. Well, you gave me a good snuggle yesterday. For a little girl who has battled with a rare eye problem since birth. It looked like Kermit Frog on one side, but uh, the other side was perfectly normal. And the cause of it was just cells behind the eye just behaving badly and uh, forcing the eye out of the socket. Eight-month-old Rosalia was first rushed to Christchurch. <laughs> with the help of the Rotary Humanitarian Program, Romac, when she was just six weeks old. It's very hard for me to, because only me and my daughter, we have to come along from Fiji to New Zealand. Sadly, despite their best efforts, Christchurch surgeons couldn't save her eye during a four-hour operation. So on this trip, her eye socket has been built up, ready for an artificial eye. God willing, she'll finish up just looking like us, and that'll be great. They've had free accommodation at Ronald McDonald House. It's really wonderful to be able to extend that courtesy to our Pacific friends and neighbours around here. Look at that. Murray Pierce has earned the name of Rosalia's New Zealand grandfather. You can't help but form a relationship when you, you know that the whole organisation is actually helping this child to have a better life. <laughs> they are so nice, so good people here in New Zealand. And they look up to my daughter really very well. In three months, she'll return for a final operation so she can live a normal life back home in Fiji. In sports later with Jamie, Flying Fijians coach John McKee names 30 member squad for June test matches. But for now, we join Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up. France and Fiji to strengthen business relations. An ingrown Fiji four-star hotel to be constructed at Lombasa's to Motor City. Stay with us. I got Pramila Vairupu Reki Reki Se. Subha Meri Aankh Khunti Hai, Toh Mai Mirchi FM Sunti Hu. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें इस फिल्म तक तो ताबूत के मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ In business tonight, there's many investment opportunities in Fiji which French businesses can take advantage of. This was highlighted by Economy Minister Ayar Said Kayim during the first Franco Fiji Business Dialogue in Suva today, aimed at strengthening economic relations. Kelly Vazala has more. Fiji's relationship with France has always involved diplomatic ties, however, this time there are more prospects. There's a lot of opportunities again uh, with, with the you know, transfer of technology that has been developed in countries like France in the area of, for example, renewable energy. And again, FEA uh, is talking to a French company in that respect, how we can not only transfer technology, but also there's business opportunities in that respect. French ambassador to Fiji, Sujiro Sim, says the first Franco-Fiji dialogue provides a platform for both countries to share their ideas. Those meetings should be designed to address uh, thematic or sectoral issues such as uh, their business environment, regulatory matters, tax matters, but also uh, business in uh, infrastructure, sustainable development, food products, new technology, financial services, and regional business. We can make connections. We, can, we understand the market, the economy, uh, so it's good also for investors to know that there's a French bank in the, in the market. It's also good for Fijian entrepreneurs. The dialogue was attended by some prominent local business stakeholders, including French-based businesses. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the financial market.
A quick update on the markets. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand held its interest rate steady at 1.75% this morning. According to their central bank governor, this will help maintain employment and drive inflation towards a 2% target. Their annual inflation slowed to just 1.1% in the first quarter. Meanwhile, rising interest rates are pushing the dollar higher against major currencies. However, their April producer price index came in weaker than expected at 2.3%. Tonight, we expect the Bank of England to announce their interest rate decision. However, a recent run of weak UK economic data and renewed worries about Brexit have led the market to price out the possibility of any rate hike this month. And those are the major changes affecting the global markets today. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Sharon. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar was on the rise against all the currencies we cover, with the exception of the Australian dollar, where it slipped by more by a merry seven basis point. As for the commodities market, a mixed day with oil prices on the rise again at 71.69 per barrel. Gold dropped slightly to close at 1,312 an ounce, and silver closed up at 16.51 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Modern Not Limited and Paul Jadiram Investments Limited have signed an MOU today to develop a four-star hotel at the De Modern City Lambasa complex. Director Natasha Jadiram says the parties have set up a project team who will be carrying out the due di diligence. Jadiram says the hotel is likely to have 40 rooms, a large conference facility, restaurants, lounge bar and complimentary retail activities, including a travel and tour agency, airline ticket in office and a coffee store. She says the project will cost around five million dollars creating employment for residents in Lombasa. Um, we'll be employing almost 45 employees and upon uh, commencing the hotel there will be 25 employees as well and we are quite privileged to be joining um, the Modern North Limited in this uh, joint venture. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thank you, Rachel. And good evening in sports tonight. Baby says criticism comes with a job. And top players return for Namosi. This and more coming up. Mirchi FM is hot. Keeping Fiji Rugby Sevens fans happy and optimistic might be one of the toughest jobs in the world. The title of Fiji Sevens coach isn't always roses and rainbows, something coach Gareth Baber expected when he took up the job. Copping huge criticism after a quarter-final exit at the Sydney Sevens in January, support for Baber and his vision has grown immensely since winning three tournaments back-to-back -to -back and taking the lead on the series points table. Vasnil Prasad with this report. Underestimated by many, coach Gareth Beba has silenced all the criticism against him with a star showing this season. Well, I knew there was going to be difficulties. I mean, as you said, not to hark on, but any team that comes off the back of an Olympics then loses some of its senior players for overseas um, uh, uh, contracts. And then you lose your captain just after the tournament last year. I mean, any other coach would be looking at and scratching his head thinking how he's going to get through it. Taking up the role last year, Beba had a lot on his plate and this included in just two years. He had a World Series title to win, then the Commonwealth Games and the World Cup in July. It doesn't come more congested than that. Um, but these players have worked phenomenally hard. Uh, they've taken criticism, we've all taken criticism, but uh, it's the nature of sport. And uh, fortunately, uh, we're doing some good things at the moment. And Not only him, this set of players were also under fire for their non-performance. Mm. We trusted him, uh, even though you know, people talk about him, about the team, but 
from my experience, I trusted him. I trusted the process that uh, he will put uh, for us, for the new boys. Baber's biggest inspiration was the trust he had in his set of players. Be an element of trust in a coach. You see it all. You see it in soccer. You see it in rugby all around the world. But that's what we're, we're here. That's where our experience is, and that's what we're paid to do. But the game is not over yet. Despite winning four tournaments this season and claiming the top spot on the World Rugby 7 series standings, the job is not yet over for the Fiji 7s team. They have a lot to do to claim the series title this year and of course win the World Cup in July. Rashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Sevuloni Modenadangi and Kalyoni Nosoko have been given leave from camp to rest and recover before rejoining preparations for the final leg of the World Series. Modena Dangi is still recovering from the injury he sustained at the Singapore Sevens, while Nasoko is down with the flu. Tsasa Veromalua and Vatemo Rabobo have returned to intense training after missing the tournament last month. Uh, Vatemo Rabobo obviously was, uh, had the flu previous to his coming to Singapore, so that's why he didn't go to travel. And Sammy Viriviri had been obviously in the Commonwealth Games squad and the Hong Kong squad. So those boys have come back in with us. Um, Kali Nasoko has got the flu, he's gone home. And Sevaloni. Martin Athagi, who's got uh, the rib cartilage damage, he's been with us. Uh, he's trained this week, light be it, but uh, has done some training and um, has gone back home as well to recover. Tulon winger Semi Ranranra could make his debut for the Fiji Airways Flying Fijians as early as next month. Flying Fijians coach John McKee has named Ranranra in his final 30 member squad. Brief based French top 14 player Sevenai Ngalala could also make his debut in June. Five local players, which include Fiji Warriors captain Mosese Voka, front rowers Tuvere Veremalua, Eroni Mawi, Ratunaisa Navuma and Sirpupeli Wula Rika have also made the list. Australia-based Albert Tuisue, who has been with the Warriors, has also been drafted into the team. In its first match this season, the Flying Fijians take on Samoa on June 9th, Georgia a week later, then Tonga on the 23rd of June. The Tailewu Rugby Union has been on a strict budget since the start of the Vodafone Vanua Challenge. Tailewu's last two outings in Ovalau and Bua saw its new management digging into their own pockets to cover travelling expenses and accommodation. Early Tavanga reports. With their limited resources, the Tailewu side has set a strict budget on expenses to carry them through this season. To manage on our finances. We have to instill strict financial management on our finding so as it can get us through to the next game. The new management had to contribute in the last two tours. It's very costly to go to Ovalau. It costs us about more than $3,000. To go to Mboa, it cost us more than $6,000. Captain Epa Ramaluwata says despite the financial obstacles, the team has managed to win their last two matches and they're expecting more wins. I've reminded my teammates to keep progressing and be consistent. Despite all these difficulties, we should deliver well on the field. Meanwhile, the side is calling on its fans to come out in numbers to support them at Ratu Dakumbo Park in Osori when they take on Maduata on Saturday. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. The Nomosi rugby side will be boosted with the return of nine Fiji Warriors players for its Skipper Cup match against Suva on Saturday. Warriors captain Mosese Voka, scrum half Serpu Peli Vularika and Alivareti Veto Kani are some of the players returning to club duties. Winless in the competition so far, Namosi hopes these players will help them secure its first win in the competition. Well, especially um, playing Suba will be uh, a really uh, good match for us, you know. Uh, especially coming out of two losses for the first and second round. Uh, yeah, Nandronga Gisuba gave a good game against Nandronga last week, so we expect uh, Suba to come out firing this week. A Premier League fairy tale for Huddersfield after their dramatic one all draw with Chelsea secured their survival in the top flight. The result effectively confirming Swansea City's relegation with the side needing a near miracle to stay up. In today's play of the day, Harry Kane's second half goal against Newcastle that secured Tottenham's place in next season's Champions League. The win also pushing Tottenham to third place in the Premier League.
That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a look at some of Sweden's unique hotel rooms. That's coming up. Bula, Keron Mai Singatoka, Keron Do Tali Takanavaro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and the Moy Viti. I have an interesting in new media tonight, multiplayer AR games are coming thanks to Google. Here's why it's amazing. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. We're like so close to the weekend. Exciting. Hope your day went well. Well, of course it did. When the weather's good, everything's good. Let's see how good was the western side for today. Great conditions, amazing sunshine, perfect for suntan. Eastwards from Back Harbor to Suva, Kebus, blue skies with few afternoon light showers. And up north, what can we say? Superb sunshine with showers also aligned for overnight. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 8.23 p.m. with high tide at 2.51 a.m. Sunrise at 6.23. For tomorrow, so much excitement. It's Friday and the weather is looking pretty well, so start looking for your swimmers. Tomorrow's temps, Nandi will be moderate at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, another beautiful day is in store for us. Can't wait. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, do you agree with the inclusion of overseas players for the Rugby World Cup? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, the, the reason is uh, because... They are experienced and work overseas exposure. Uh, yes, they should be part of the World Cup and uh, they make the team, they are very good players. Yes, they should be part of the team because they make the team stronger. Yes, uh, because they are all uh, experienced players. They can make the most of it. Yes, they will bring more competition in the, our country. Yes, it will be more, give more competition to the team. Near the small village of Harrods in Sweden, a collection of unique hotel rooms lies hidden in the woods. Recapping the main stories for tonight, closing submissions in Fiji Times trial on Tuesday, Ethel K affairs via culture is evolving rapidly, and Ra residents raise concerns during Talanor session. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we are asking... Should heavy vehicles be banned from being on the road during peak hours? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by Maggie Nandore. This shot was taken in the capital overlooking Suva Harbour. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Radio Fiji One and Domo Viti. I have an interesting Radio Fiji One and Domo Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domo Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domo Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domo Viti.